To purchase the EWTN Religious Catalog home video DVD of Pray the Rosary with Mother Angelica, log on to our web store, EWTNRC.com, and type in item number HDNHR for DVDs and HCNHR for audio CDs, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, or call 1-800-854-6316. Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray in reparation for sin. Almighty and all-powerful God, we humbly come before you for we have sinned against you and deserve punishment our family, our nation, and the world continue to offend you, who are all good and deserving of all of our love. We pray in reparation for all of the sin which offends you. Do not give us what we truly deserve, but grant us your mercy and forgiveness. Let us not suffer damnation, but help us find the way to salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood.
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty and sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not, so that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, there is no other. Verbum Domini. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy 
to the church of the Thessalonians. And God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, give grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for you, all of you, remembering you in all our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance and hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. Verbum Domini. Sancti Evangelii secundum Matthäum. Gloria The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with a Herodian saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. Verbum Domini. My first work, professional work, was in the medical imaging field. And so I worked installing and repairing medical imaging equipment, x-ray equipment, CAT scanners, nuclear medicine equipment, and ultrasound equipment. 
And these new technologies have helped us to see what's going on inside. And so we think especially of the ultrasound as helpful in seeing how a baby develops within the womb. And we learn quickly their unique personhood, how soon their heart is beating, their fingers and toes are already present, and so on. So it's a marvelous thing that gives us an image of what is going on inside. And when we think of today's gospel, where they're trying to confound Jesus, putting him in this situation where apparently there's no solution. <laughs> He's either going to be in trouble with the Roman authorities for saying don't pay the tax, or they're going to see him as colluding with them if he says, yeah, pay the tax. So with the wisdom that God has and can never be confounded, he says, show me your coin. And so I brought an actual picture. It was the, during the reign of Tiberius was the Caesar during the life of Jesus and his crucifixion. Tiberius, the Caesar, was the one who put the prefect Pontius Pilate in charge of the Roman province of Judea, where Jerusalem was. And so the Caesars would have coins made that these coins represented one day's work for soldiers or other workers. It was one day's work is what a denarius represented. And they would have their own image on there. They were considered divine since Julius Caesar and Augustus and then Tiberius, they're considered divine. And so I have here one of those actual coins because Tiberius, unlike the uh, Caesars that preceded him, only had one coin for the most part through his 23 year reign. So there's many of these coins I noticed last night as I was looking at this that there's a number of them up for auction for over $1,000 if you wanted one of these coins and so on. So we see that Jesus points out that whose image is on that? It's the image of Tiberius Caesar. And it has on that coin, you see there that coin that I have present there, Caesar Augustus Tiberius, son of the divine Augustus. What is interesting is that if you look at the book of Genesis, you look at the creation, the crowning of God's creation. He creates all of these things and the crown of his creation is man and woman because they alone have the ability of all of the creatures God had made to know God and to love God and to respond to God, to go into a covenant with God. And we are told in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26, that they were made in the image and the likeness of God. The word that is used in the Greek a version of the Old Testament, Septuagint, that the apostles used. The word is icon. We know the word icon means an image. And so they are made in the icon of God, the image and likeness of God. St. Paul in his letter to the Colossians said that Jesus is the image, the icon, of the invisible God. He's the firstborn of all creation. And so he's the icon of God, but we too are made in the image and likeness of God. We see that in the book of Genesis. And so Jesus is speaking about, okay, you have this image, this icon of Caesar on Caesar's coin, that belongs to him, but give to God what is God's. So we are made in his image and likeness. And so purposely then I put an ultrasound picture of an unborn child, contrasting it with the image of Caesar on this coin. So the one has small monetary value, 
And the other, some would say, doesn't really have any value. It can be cast away if you want to. But others say, no, there's a supreme dignity because this child, even in the womb, is an icon made in the image and likeness of God. And so has this dignity from the very first moment of conception all the way until its natural death. So we're made in this image and likeness of God. It's a wonderful truth. And it's really the foundation of all of our moral principles that we, each and every one of us, every person that is alive, has this remarkable dignity above all of the rest of creation because we can know God, we can love God. And the Catechism, in fact, has a section on the image of God. It's a paragraph, it's a, and the section on man. So this is number 356 and 357. Here's what the church teaches about what this means if we're made in the image and the likeness of God. 356, of all visible creatures, only man is able to know and love his creator. He is the only creature on earth that God has willed for its own sake. So we weren't made for some other purpose. We know that the rest of creation is under man's dominion in a way that it serves him. But no, we are made and willed for our own sake. And he alone is called to share by knowledge and love in God's own life. It was for this end that he was created. And this is the fundamental reason for his dignity. That's why we have dignity. If we choose to cast out God from our society, what do you see? When a government wants to get rid of God in society, then they end up killing man because they don't recognize that dignity anymore. If there's no connection or relationship with God, then we lose all of our dignity. We're just a subject of the state to be ruled and governed according to their whims or desires. But our founding fathers, thanks be to God, realized there was a higher authority, that God is the highest authority. That's what Jesus points out. That yes, the the government has its own place, what it is to do in society, but also that God, that they are subject also to God. You know, in the Second Vatican Council documents, there's a document about the church in the modern world, Gaudium et Spes, Uh, Joy and Hope is the title of it. And it talks about what we are to do politically. And it says that politically that both the government on earth and the church are directed toward the good of man, are directed toward the common good. And I know that probably you like I are getting weary of all of this political tension and political advertising and all of these things, we're weary of it. But we have to say, we gotta take responsibility responsibility for our future. And so what does Gaudium et Spes say? Let all citizens be mindful of their simultaneous right and duty to vote freely in the interest of advancing the common good. That's what our goal is, to advance the common good. Each in their proper place, the earthly government, the church, which is pointing us toward our eternal vocation, that which endures, both serve the same human beings. The church, her task is to uncover, cherish, and ennoble all that is true, good, and beautiful in the human community. She should be able to discharge her duty among men without hindrance. Again, from the Catechism, 
on the image of God. This is number 357, talking about we're made in the image of God and the dignity that that brings about. The dignity of a person being in the image of God, the individual possesses the dignity of a person, a person who is not just something, but someone capable of self-knowledge. We can know ourselves. We can know that we know. So we can know of ourselves. Self-possession and of freely giving himself and entering into communion with other persons and come into a covenant with his creator. You know, I heard a great quote on uh, Catholic radio yesterday morning by G.K. Chesterton. And in that he was talking about if someone would correct another person, some would say, well, you should never ever do that. And he said, G.K. Chesterton said, when you're doing that, you're pointing out the dignity of that person. So if you would call a man a coward, you're saying you're capable of much more. You can be a hero. It's within you to be a hero, to be courageous. I think that's a beautiful insight of G.K. Chesterton, that we're called to virtue, we're called to greatness, we're called to holiness. Yesterday, our own uh, chairman of the board and chief executive officer, Michael Warsaw, wrote an article He's also the publisher of the National Catholic Register, and you can find this on the internet quite easily, in which he wrote this article called Voting for a Vision, Not a Person. Voting for a Vision, Not a Person. So as we are preparing for our general elections, we're asking and we're joining you all in praying for our nation, and I encourage you to go to ewtn.com slash novena and put in there your spiritual bouquets that you want to offer. You don't have to do that. You can certainly offer your spiritual bouquets without doing that, offering special prayers as we all feel called to do that at this, this time, but you could, and we will put those spiritual bouquets here in the basket next to Our Lady, who is the Immaculate Conception, the patroness of the United States. But he wrote, Michael Warsaw wrote this article yesterday, voting for a vision, not a person. Pray and vote for the future of your country. And in this article, he talks about two different visions of the two platforms of the two parties, two very different visions about the way forward for and the future of the United States of America. It's well worth reading. That one vision sees that faith is not something to be defended against, but rather faith is critical to the flourishing of our country. As our founding fathers said, that democracy can only survive in the midst of a moral and religious people because it's in that sense that we are our own kings that we are being ruled by the higher authority, we're subjecting ourselves to the higher authority by being moral and religious people. And then we're able to be more self-governing. But without that, without that moral guideline, without religious faith, then we have to have a despot over us, a tyrant to keep things in order. So that's really the choice that we have to make. Do we want to be subject to the government? Yes, it has its role, it has its place. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. We follow the laws that are gonna lead to our peace and our security. We want to be law-abiding citizens. But that ultimately, for democracy to survive, we have to be governed by a higher authority, by God individually, striving to live in according with his moral law, in accord with his 
plans and purposes, recognizing the dignity of each and every person from conception until natural death. And when we have that, then we can flourish. So that's one vision that's being presented the other, being presented by one of the platforms. The other sees that, that religion must submit to politics and the state, that it can be a threat to, to freedom, a threat to future. And that's basically it, that it has to submit to a higher authority. So let's look especially at uh, these platforms. But just to think in your own mind, looking at the vision for the future of the United States of America, not so much as a person, and looking at our own Catholic moral principles to guide us in making our votes and our decisions. First of all, which of the platforms do you think will uphold that vision of the dignity of the human person from conception to natural death the best? I think that's pretty obvious. Vote for a vision, not for a person. What is the vision? What is the vision about the dignity of the human person? What is the vision about our dignity coming from God? Is this ultrasound, is that something or someone? Is that a person with dignity? And in every stage of life, and the elderly, and so on, which platform is most going to uphold that Catholic principle of the dignity of each and every human person from conception until natural death. EWTN has a wonderful voter's guide that you can go to ewtn.com slash vote. And they have a section on moral principles and non-negotiable goods. In other words, those in which we can't compromise. We can't compromise on these particular things. One has to do with the dignity of human life, as I've just spoken of. The second, the dignity of marriage and family. Again, which platform is most going to support the dignity of marriage between one man and woman, of family life, and help that to flourish? Which platform may have assaults against that? does have assaults against that. Undermining the dignity of marriage, family, sexual relations, opening the door to all sorts of perversions. Which platform? Voting for a vision, not for a person. What is the vision of the future of America for each of these platforms? It's for you to decide. And then thirdly, religious and conscious freedoms. So we have this dignity that we, we can't go against our conscience. We have to have the freedom to be able to follow our conscience, not to be coerced into going against our moral principles. EWTN and the Little Sisters of the Poor have fought long, hard battles because of the government imposition trying to impose the HHS mandate, forcing us to provide our employees with contraception and abortifacients, chemicals that will bring about abortion. We can't do that. It's against our conscience. Which platform is going to support that religious freedom and conscience rights? Which platform is going to undermine those? and seek to bring about a government coercion to force us to act against our consciences in some cases. These are non-negotiables. Human dignity, the dignity of marriage and family, religious and conscience freedoms. Read Michael Warsaw's 
peace, voting for a vision, not a person. Pray and vote for the future of our country. But we always conclude with hope because our hope springs eternal. Why? Because Jesus is risen from the dead. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the image of the invisible God. But wonderfully, we are made in the image and likeness of God. And so we are able to know this God who has made us. We're able to love him. We are able to have a covenant with him and to enjoy the eternal embrace of God in heaven. Yes, Caesar has his place. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, governing the temporal affairs. We have our own responsibility and duty in regard to that is how we vote and who we elect, voting for the furtherance of, of morality and dignity because only our democracy can only survive in the midst of a moral and religious people. We have that duty and responsibility. The government has its place. We're law-abiding citizens. We strive to uh, have that peace and security that law brings. But the church points toward the eternal realities. The church points toward God's will, his plan, the natural law, the moral law that's going to lead us to our true flourishing. May God bless us, guide us. May we all be rejoined one day in the joys of heaven. And may Mary, the Immaculate Conception, patroness of the United States of America, pray for us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We adore and praise our God who reigns above the heavens. He is the Lord of Lords, and before him all creation is as nothing. Humbly we place our needs before him. For the President, Congress, and Governors, that they be enabled by God's assistance and protection to carry out their duties with honesty and ability, and that the Immaculate Conception, patroness of the United States, may pray for us who have recourse to her for the many nations of our nation and the world at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord that parents may strive to fulfill their vocations by preparing their children for Christian living in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Holy Spirit may aid and inspire all those who bring the message of truth to the world through the communications media. We pray to the Lord. Lord 
that those whom God is calling to the priesthood and religious life may respond eagerly in faith and generosity. We pray to the Lord. For all who will die today, especially from an unexpected or violent death, that the Lord grant them eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. In your mercy, Lord, direct the affairs of men so peaceably that your church may serve you in tranquility and joy. Through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sacamus Domino de Honostro. It is to the right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the Church. And so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you and with joy we proclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, 
and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service out of your whole family, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium fidei. Mortem tuam anciamus domine, et tuam resurrectionem confitemus, dona genias. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti in unitate Spiritu Sancti Omni so honor et gloria per omnia secula seculorum. Precepti salutaribus moniti et divina institutione formati audemus dicere. Pater noster, qui es incelis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adrenia adrenum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicud in cielo, Quesumus domine ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut ope misericordiae tui ariuti, et a peccato simus semper liberi, et ab omni perturbatione securi, expectantes beatum spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Christ equid existi apostolis tuis, pacem relenco vobis, pacem meum do vobis. Nere spicias pegata nostra sed fidem ecclesiae tue, eam quae secundum voluntatem tuam pace vicare ecoaro nare digneris, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculorum. Domini sit semper vobiscum. Et un spiritu tuo. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. Most loving Jesus, I adore thee with a lively faith, who art present in this sacrament by virtue of thine infinite power, wisdom, and goodness. All my hope is in thee. I love thee, O Lord, with all my heart, who has so loved me, and therefore I desire to receive thee now spiritually. Come therefore, O Lord, to me in spirit, and heal my sinful soul. Feed me, for I am hungry. Strengthen me, for I am weak. Enliven and sanctify me with thy sacred body and blood. Deliver me from all sin, and make me always obedient to thy commandments. And let me never be separated from thee, my Saviour, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit livest and reignest, one God, World without end. Amen.
Oremus. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus Fobiscum. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus.
Hello, family. In the month of October, the Church honors the Most Holy Rosary in a special way. Mother Angelica, the foundress of EWTN, called the Rosary a mini-scripture, and she prayed it daily. Since the Rosary was important to Mother Angelica, it remains a vital part of our mission at EWTN. We join people together throughout the world in praying the Rosary, through the Rosary for Life, the Holy Rosary with Mother Angelica, the Holy Land Rosary with Father Mitch Pacwa, and the Holy Rosary and Devotions with the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word. We also have a new page on our website dedicated to Our Lady of the Rosary that includes questions and answers on the Rosary, along with a free ebook with short Rosary reflections from Mother Angelica. We hope these resources will enrich your prayer life during this special time as we seek to draw closer to Jesus through Mary, our Mother. May God bless you, and may the eternal word always live in your heart. Download your free rosary ebook today at EWTN.com forward slash Our Lady of the Rosary. And by this we may be sure that we know him, if we keep his commandments. The first letter of St. John. Chapter 2, verse 3. EWTN. Live Truth. Live Catholic. EWTN invites you to join us in this rosary as we pray for healing and protection from the coronavirus and for those who have died. As we in the United States prepare for our general elections, let us continue to pray together the Holy Rosary, humbly asking for divine assistance from the Most Blessed Trinity through the intercession of Mary, the Immaculate Conception, patroness of the United States of America. We pray for the integrity of the electoral process and that we may choose and be blessed with leaders who will govern us in accord with God's will for our spiritual and societal flourishing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Glorious Mysteries. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. For persecuted Christians and the conversion of their persecutors. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For greater faith, steadfast hope, and fervent charity. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the Amen. And that both in life and in death, we may glorify the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The first glorious mystery, the resurrection. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now, and my Jesus, Lord, forgive us Lord, our Jesus, sins, save, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The second glorious mystery, the Ascension. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The third glorious mystery, the descent of the Holy Spirit. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fourth glorious mystery, the Assumption. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The fifth glorious mystery, the coronation. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, our most gracious advocate, and eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That we may be made of the grasses of grass. To gain the plenary indulgence, we pray for our Holy Father's intentions. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O Mary, conceived without sin, election prayer of the servant of God, Father John Harden. Together, Lord Jesus Christ, you told us to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. Enlighten the minds of our people in America. May we choose a President of the United States and other government officials according to your divine will. Give our citizens the courage to choose leaders of our nation who respect the sanctity of unborn human life the sanctity of marriage, the sanctity of marital relations, the sanctity of the family, and the sanctity of the aging. Grant us the wisdom to give you what belongs to you, our God. 
If we do this as a nation, we are confident you will give us an abundance of your blessings through our elected leaders. Amen. Prayer to the Immaculata. How beautiful you are, O Mary. How beautiful you are, The original stain is not in you. The original stain is not in you. You are the glory of Jerusalem. You are the joy of Israel. You are the honor of our people. You are the honor of the sinners. O Mary. O Mary. You are the wisest of virgins. You are the kindest of mothers. Pray for us. In the Jesus Christ. Holy Virgin, you were spotless from the very moment of your conception. O Mary, concede without sin, patroness of the United States of America. O Mary, concede without sin, patroness of the United States of America. O Mary, conceive without sin, patroness of the United States of America. O God, who by the immaculate conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession, we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. on EWTN Pro-Life Weekly, the first millennial to be beatified in the church has a pro-life connection, and analysis of Amy Coney Barrett's Senate confirmation hearings, including from her longtime friend at Notre Dame. That's next time on EWTN Pro-Life Weekly, today at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. EWTN, live truth, live Catholic.